The 1960s were a tumultuous time in United States history. There were the assassinations of President John F. Kennedy, his brother Robert, Martin Luther King Jr. The Vietnam War was raging. Thousands were dying. Protests were brewing. There was the civil rights movement, a hippie subculture. There were a lot of things dividing Americans. Then, on July 20th, 1969, there was an event that brought everyone together. The Apollo 11 moon landing. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Americans watched as the black and white image of the moon landing appeared on televisions in living rooms near and far. It's estimated that 600 million people saw the initial moon landing on television worldwide. That mission, and the five others that followed, inspired the next generation of astronauts, including a Central Valley boy, who spent his time working in the fields with his family. Now, 50 years later, he's sharing his story and inspiring others to reach for the stars. Major support for Reaching for the Stars, the Jose Hernandez story, was provided by WGBH and the College of Science and Mathematics at Fresno State is growing the next generation of science and technology leaders that are transforming our region from dreams to words to character to actions to habits to accomplishments to destiny. Join us in our journey. And viewers like you. Thank you. As a kid, when I went to work out in the farms, one of my favorite things or part of the day was arriving at the farm, well away from the light pollution of the city. And as we wait for the sunrise to come up, it was still dark and you can go outside and you saw the constellations. Sometimes when the moon was out there, you know, you saw the moon out there in full glory. And when I saw Gene Cernan on TV, on the surface of that moon that I used to stare at, and then I go outside and see the moon, come back inside and see Gene Cernan on the surface of the moon on TV, I said, wow, how cool is that? I said, I wanna do that. Thank you, Nancy, appreciate it. You should not be afraid to dream big. You know, sky's not the limit. Everybody used to say, sky's the limit. You can do whatever you want. Sky's the limit. You know what? Sky's not the limit anymore. Space is. You see less than 50. Happy Jose. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> 103, 103, Team Ecos. Developing the love for space has been with me since I was a small kid. I believe it was since the first run of Star Trek series in the uh, late 60s was on, but I knew there and then when I saw Gene Cernan walk on the surface of the moon that I wanted to be an astronaut. Gene Cernan was the 11th and last person to ever walk on the moon. He was part of the Apollo 17 mission in 1972. Okay, I've got five. Jose Hernandez was a 10-year-old kid, mesmerized by what he saw unfold on his family's rickety TV set. I was strolling on the moon one day. Yo no más me acuerdo fue que que estaban viendo la televisión y fue cuando José dijo que él quería pues ser astronauta y yo le dije que pues que sí sí podía hacerlo si él que se quería y se se proponía si llegaba si podía llegar a hacer eso y pero tenía que estudiar muy duro y, y hasta podía llegar a ser presidente algún día si se proponía. It was a life changing moment because from there on I said this is what I was brought to this planet for is to become an astronaut and I'm going to become an astronaut.
estábamos muy contentos con él, pero también estaba contento yo con todos, porque todos, como le digo, eran todos muy buenos estudiantes, los, los cuatro hijos míos. Pero José era algo, era algo especial porque él tenía como, era un MGA student, mentally give. Eh, me, eso me dijo a mí una profesora. My parents are originally from Mexico and they were uh, migrant farm workers and so their routine was very quite simple. Nine months in California, three months in their hometown in central Mexico in the state of Michoacán. During those nine months they would travel from Southern California, Central California, and then end up in Northern California, return home and begin that process. Some of us were lucky enough to be born here. Some of us uh, were born in Mexico. I was born during the harvest months, so I was born here uh, in Stockton, California. Yo no tenía un trabajo estable. Tenía que buscar la forma de mantener mi familia y teníamos que movernos, seguir las cosechas para donde quiera que íbamos. Teníamos que movernos. Y, y, y teníamos que dejar una casa y agarrar otra en otro pueblo y así. Era la vida un poco dura. Sí, sí, hace falta. Está cargadita. I was also a migrant farm worker as I grew up. My parents would take us every Saturday and Sunday. If they were working in the fields, we would be working with them. And while lots of kids loved summer vacation, us Hernandez kids hated it because that meant we would be seven days a week working in the fields. And whatever was in season, we picked it everything from strawberries to cherries to cucumbers, onions, tomatoes, and we ended the year with the grape harvest. El primer lugar yo que quería que, que ellos estudiaran eh, la escuela era muy, era primordial para mí la escuela que agarraran ellos educación, porque yo no quería que ellos sufrieran lo que yo había sufrido lo que sufría yo en el trabajo y yo quería que ellos ganaran eh, dinero en diferente forma más bien que yo. Jose's second grade teacher convinced Jose's family to stop moving from place to place and make Stockton their home. And I believe that's when our education got traction and uh, we started doing even uh, better in school. Now because we moved around so much uh, I didn't learn the English language what I consider to be fluent until I was 12 years old. And so my refuge before that in school was science and math. That teacher, Miss Young, gave Jose a book about space that he still has today. It's a book that, uh, that talks about the earth, moon, and sun. And so that really, I must have read that several hundred, if not thousands of times before I became an astronaut. Al principio nadie sabía más me lo había dicho a mí y no quería decirlo a nadie pues pero yo sí sabía que él quería hacer eso y pues yo lo, yo lo apoyaba nada más y me gustaba porque era muy buen estudiante y él y le seguía ayudando con lo que yo podía porque pues no, no sabía yo yo no tengo escuela no tuve escuela yo hasta el cuarto año y pura, pura grammar school y no 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 supe yo, no sabía yo I still dreamed of becoming an astronaut. And I told my dad, who only has a third grade education, he said, Mijo, if you want to be an astronaut, he said, you got to follow these five simple steps. The first, decide what you want to be in life. What do you want to be? I said, I want to be an astronaut. Second, he said, recognize how far you are. Because the third thing you got to do is you got to draw yourself a roadmap so you know how to get there. I said, what's the fourth, dad? So you gotta stay in school, get good grades, and go to college. And I said, what's the fifth thing? He pointed outside, you know, he said, you know that effort you put picking fruits and vegetables Saturdays and Sundays, seven days a week during the summer? I said, yeah. He said, you put that effort, and he pointed to my books on the kitchen table. So you put that effort here. Jose credits his father's five ingredient recipe for success as the vehicle that helped him eventually reach his goal of becoming an astronaut. Today, he passes that recipe off to the next generation, including this group of incoming seventh graders taking part in a summer camp at his alma mater, the University of the Pacific. When I got selected as an astronaut in 2004, I used to come back to my community. The community was very proud of me and people would get pumped up but then I would go away back to training and the excitement would go down. I would come back, they would get pumped up, leave, excitement go down. And so 
I said, we gotta do something to change this and uh, what can we do? And that's when I got the idea of, hey, let's have something sustainable. Let's create a foundation and we'll call it Reaching for the Stars. The Reach for the Stars program is a multi-sector community organization that's supported by SMUD here in Sacramento, University of the Pacific, Stockton and Sacramento, and the Jose Hernandez Reach for the Stars Foundation. And it's designed to keep students focused on college and career. And um, we offer academies that run during the summer and students go from rising sixth graders through rising 12th graders. Each summer, students engage in STEM activities that are project-based. Some examples are pre-engineering, pre-logic, pre-physics, pre-algebraic structures, and um, also statistics, problem solving, um, as well as aeronautics. We work with the school districts. The strategy is not to cherry pick and pick the top performing students. We like to have a good group of top performing students, a, uh, a bigger group of uh, what I would call the average students, and then, uh, and then we have a small group of challenge students that show promise but are challenged. And uh, we figure that we have this mix and they blend together and they tend to push each other up. There's no cost for the students to attend the summer camp. The majority of the children come from a background similar to how Jose grew up. Always, always do more than what people expect out of you. In other words, when the teacher has optional extra credit, you know what? It's not optional for you. You do it, okay? So always do more than what they expect of you. Your dad tells you, cut the grass, mijo. You cut the grass and then you do the edging. You do more than what's expected of you. Okay, always do that. I think that he's a really good influence to kids that don't believe in themselves or don't have that confidence in themselves. And he really helps them get confidence and he wants all kids to like reach for the stars. So, so like uh, they can become good people when they grow up. Students can be inspired by Jose through his vision to do something great, to do something wonderful for his community, and to accomplish his academic goals as well as his professional goals for becoming an astronaut. Becoming an astronaut didn't come easy. Jose was 10 years old when he watched the Apollo 17 moon landing in 1972. It wasn't until 32 years later, in 2004, that he was selected by NASA to become an astronaut. He was rejected 11 times. Perseverance, word of the day, right? Means never, ever, ever give up on yourselves, right? Because NASA rejected me not once, not twice, 11 times. It was on the 12th time that I got selected. So you never ever give up on yourselves. You keep doing it, doing it, doing it. You know what? Before you know it, you get to your destination. You get to your goal, okay? On August 28, 2009, Jose's wait was over. His parents, wife, five children, siblings and extended family gathered in Florida to see his launch live. Happy Jose. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> 103, 103, Team Ecos. 
Jose was an engineer aboard the space shuttle Discovery. The 14-day mission took the crew to the International Space Station. We were probably the second to last mission for station complete, completing the construction of the International Space Station. And there we were taking seven tons of equipment to install inside and outside of the International Space Station. It's such a humbling experience. Uh, you look down on Earth and you, know, you go around the world once every 90 minutes. Uh, you look down and you, then you look the opposite side and you look how vast the universe is and we're just a small little speck of dust in the grand scheme of things. So, things. so it really is a very humbling experience. Estábamos allá, allá cuando fuimos a verlo, a, des, a ir para el espacio, pues nos sentíamos muy a gusto, muy contentos, pues muy contentos y muy orgullosos de ver a mi hijo que iba a, a cumplir su sueño. El teléfono no, 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 falta, no son, sonaba pues para darnos, para felicitarnos de todo eso. Cuando estuvo él allá en, 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 el, en el espacio, él, él nos habló también por teléfono y bien contentos. I'm sure things were going through my parents' mind, things were going through my wife's mind, even my kids, but the fact that it was a dream that I had and I wanted to fulfill, I think they were very supportive of it in spite of the risk. If I had to do it again, I absolutely I would do it again. I just couldn't believe that uh, you know, here's this kid working up as a migrant farm worker, uh, who was able to uh, you know, pull himself up by the bootstraps, get a good education, and be able to become an astronaut. I said, how, how cool is the fact that NASA allows you to do this? How cool is the fact that this country allows you to do this? And, uh, and we're certainly uh, living true example of a, uh, the American dream. Jose hopes that through the work of his foundation, Reaching for the Stars, other kids can be inspired to live out their own American dream. The best part of this program so far has been making projects such as the Toothpick Bridge Project. I have learned you have to make it stiff enough that way it can hold up, that way it won't fall. In honor of the 50th anniversary moon landing, students will be doing a variety of activities such as building spaceships, building models, and also taking them out to a field to test them to see how far into space they go. They'll be creating payloads to attach to them to see um, what comes back. Like the Apollo astronauts who made history 50 years ago, these kids can make history of their own if they grow up to be among the NASA crew members that eventually explore Mars. I think that during my lifetime, I will be able to see humans on Mars. I think it will be towards the end of my lifetime, but it'll probably be a, another 20, 25 years before we actually embark upon a mission to Mars. The first step to making that mission to Mars a reality could be going back to the moon. NASA is already planning for that we could see humans back on the moon by 2025. While traveling to the moon or Mars might not be one of Jose's future plans, it could be for his oldest son. He is currently getting his PhD at Purdue and hopes to follow in his father's footsteps and work for NASA as an astronaut. The vortices off the wings, very obvious. Thank you, Jose, that valve is open. Discovery, on at the 180. On at the 180. Since retiring from NASA, Jose spends some of his time working the fields with his father, now as an owner. I used to work as a farm worker and now I tend to my own 20 acre farm. We have a vineyard, I have a vineyard, uh, I grow grapes and sell it to a winemaker. It's great because it's kind of like coming full circle. As a kid I used to work picking grapes. Uh, and it, it, it's kind of like uh, pretty neat that now I own the grapes.
Major support for Reaching for the Stars, the Jose Hernandez story, was provided by WGBH and... The College of Science and Mathematics at Fresno State is growing the next generation of science and technology leaders that are transforming our region. From dreams, to words, to character, to actions, to habits, to accomplishments, to destiny. Join us in our journey. And viewers like you. Thank you. Chasing the Moon revisits the space race and moon landing for a new generation, deeply exploring the role it played in our society and showcasing a visual feast of never-before-seen archival material. You count on PBS to bring you powerful programs like these, but it's only possible with your financial support. Support this PBS station by becoming a sustainer at $7 a month or by making an $84 annual contribution. And we'll thank you with our new Phases of the Moon mug. With majestic images of the moon when it's cold, adding a warm liquid reveals an amazing timeline of historic moon landing events. Become a sustainer at $10 a month or make an annual contribution of $120 and we'll thank you with the three DVD set of American Experience, Chasing the Moon. This collection features the entire six-hour series that will premiere on your PBS station this summer and recast the space age as a fascinating mix of scientific innovation, political calculation, and personal drama with exclusive bonus content as well. Or become a sustainer at $16 a month or make an annual contribution of $192 and we'll thank you with the Phases of the Moon Heat Changing Mug, the six hour three DVD unabridged Chasing the Moon series and with the Robert L. Stone and Alan Andres 384 page companion hardcover book to the series, Chasing the Moon, the people, the politics, and the promise that launched America into the space age, that further explores the stories of the team who helped America fulfill President Kennedy's vision of the first lunar landing 50 years ago. Make your contribution to this PBS station by calling the number on your screen or giving online when you visit our website. Thank you.